The last thing we're going to talk about today, we're going to move away from some of these order operations type problems. We're going to talk about how to deal with the operations of mixed numbers. Well, you, you've been noticing probably that we haven't had a whole lot of mixed numbers, right? They've been fractions or we've been leaving them improper fractions. But oftentimes we're going to see addition, subtraction, multiplication, division of some mixed numbers. So let's talk about that. Operations with mixed numbers. You know, before we get to addition and subtraction, let's look at some multiplicand. Multiple you want to look at some multiplicand? That sounds right. I just made that word up. <laughs> That's not even a word. Excuse me. <laughs> what? Look at some multiplying and dividing these mixed numbers. <clears throat> so how does it even look? Well, if I have a couple mixed numbers, like let's say 1 and 2 thirds times, let's keep that one a regular fraction, 11 fifteenths. How in the world are we going to multiply 1 and 2 thirds times 11 fifteenths? My goodness. Well, I'll tell you what, th there's actually no way to multiply a mixed number times a fraction. There's no way to do it. You can't just take these two numbers and multiply them. It doesn't happen. You can't take this times this and this times that. that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You actually have to convert it, which is kind of nice for us because we've already done the, the conversion. Is there a different way that you can write one and two thirds? Yeah. Yeah. How else could you write it? As an improper fraction. Improper, improper fraction. So, oh, wait. Let's bring up old stuff. Good at converting a mixed number to an improper fraction. Can you do it? Yeah. What is this as an improper fraction? Five five thirds. Thirds. How'd you get that? You times the three and add two. Three times this number? And then you add the two. So, three times one is three. You add the two, you get five. You get five. The denominator won't change. So, you're going to get five thirds here. times 11 fifteenths. Hey, hey, can you do that problem? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we got this done. We've already just, we've just done that. So basically, this is kind of nice about this section. Literally, the only thing that I'm, I'm teaching you in this section is that you're supposed to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions and then do exactly the same thing we've done in the last six sections. Okay, you, that's, that's all we're gonna do. Convert, anytime you see a mixed number in this class, you're gonna convert that to an improper fraction. Now, there are methods for addition and subtraction that you can keep it as a mixed number. Some of them are a little bit confusing. I'm going to stick with converting it to an improper fraction. That way we're all on the same page. Does that sound good? Yeah. Um, also, in, later on in, in your math careers, we really don't even deal with mixed numbers that much anymore. You're going to deal with improper fractions. They're just easier to work with because of reasons like exponent rules and things like that. So, ultimately, our goal here is to convert mixed numbers to improper, then do the same operations. So I'm just going to put convert to improper fractions. One of them is already just a normal fraction. We're okay. The other one we're converting to an improper fraction. Let's continue to do this. I have 5 thirds times 11 fifteenths. So what's the next thing I'm going to do? Simplify. Before I simplify. LCD. Do I need an LCD? No. no. When do you need an LCD? Yeah. Yeah. So here, we're just going to make this one fraction. Do you see any numbers that will simplify? Okay. What's our fraction going to become? Eleven. 
And one last thing, if you got 11 over 9, can you convert that back to a mixed number? Yes. Do it. How much do you get? One and two. Nine. Okay, here's the rule for mixed numbers in my class. The rule is, if I don't give you something in mixed number form, you don't have to give it back to me in mixed number form. If I give it to you in mixed number form, you're going to give it back to me in mixed number form. Does that make sense? So that, just read the problem. If I don't have any mixed numbers up there, no matter what you get, that's fine, you can leave it. If you want to give me mixed numbers all the time, I don't really care, that's fine. But if I give you something with mixed numbers in it, I'm expecting you to give that back to me in mixed numbers if it's applicable for that situation. You got me? Yes. All right, good deal. I'd like you to try one on your own here real quick before we go any further, just to make sure that you have the handle on this stuff. Three and one-third times seven-eighths. Three and one-third times seven-eighths. Of course, we cannot just directly do this problem. You're going to have to convert it. So I'm expecting you to convert this into an improper fraction and then do the operations like we've already learned how to do. Okay, so first thing, there is really no way that we can multiply a mixed number fraction by a regular fraction. So the, the only option we really have is to convert this into an improper fraction first and then do our multiplication. In our case, converting to an improper fraction means dealing with this thing. We get 3 times 3 plus 1. Hopefully you got 10 thirds out of that. Did you get 10 thirds? Yes. The 7 eighths, we don't have to change that one bit. It's already the way that we want. It's a single fraction. Now, in order to multiply, of course, we extend our line, and we multiply the, both the numerators and denominators. That signifies that I can actually simplify this thing. What simplifies in our case? Can't eight. Eight. <coughs> what number goes into both those? Two. Five times? Four times. Thirty-five and twelve? Yeah. Cool. Now, that's an improper fraction. I've given you some mixed numbers. We're going to translate that back. So 12 goes into 35 two times without going over. And the remainder is, so we're going to do 11 twelfths. This is 2. Do you remember how to do that, by the way? If you don't remember, you're dividing 35 by 12. You're taking the remainder. And you're putting that over the denominator that you have. So 2 and 11 twelfths. How about 5, 6 times 18? 5, 6 times 18. Do I have an improper fraction here? No. no. Yeah. Really? Wait a minute, explain that. The 18 over 1. So if I made it a fraction, it'd have to be 18 over 1, right? And that would be an improper fraction. So right now, I really only have one fraction, a whole number. However, any whole number is automatically a fraction. We just have to put this over 1 to see that it's an improper fraction. 
Yes, no? Are you okay with that? Change it to a fraction. That's, that's automatically an improper fraction for us. So there, there wasn't any, a whole lot of work with that. If you got a whole number, put it over 1, then we can do the same multiplication. Of course, we're going to have 5 times 18. We'll have 6 times 1. What simplifies in this problem? That's really nice. What goes into both those numbers? Before, higher than 3. 6. 1 time, 3 times. You're going to get what? 15 over 1. Yeah, are you going to leave it 15 over 1? No. Nah, we're going to do 15. That's changing something from an improper fraction back down to a mixed number. Now, there's no fraction part. It's a whole number. But that's the idea. That's why we don't leave stuff. It's 15 over 1. If it's 15, we write 15. If it was 1 over 15, that's a different story. Then you have 1 15. That's completely different than 15 over 1. You liking it so far? Not too bad? We'll do, let's do one more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own. We'll talk about the vision briefly, and then we'll be done for our day. Okay, two and three fourths times three and one fifth. You tell me the first thing I need to do on this problem. Make Yeah, you know what a lot of people do when they're going quicker if they really just don't understand the concept. A lot of people on this problem do this right here. You can see it. Watch on the board. They go, "Oh, this is six and three twentieths." Could you see how people could get that? Can you see how they could get six and four or three twentieths yeah. if they were just multiplying? They really didn't know what's going on. That's how a lot of people make a mistake. They go, oh yeah, I'll just multiply these numbers and get 6, these fractions and get four tw or 3 twentieths, and then I I'm done. Wait, wait, really? That's not going to be anywhere close to what we're going to get on this problem. So the first thing you got to do, of course, you do have to convert this into improper. What's this as an improper fraction? 11 over 5. 11, 11 over 1. over 4. Okay. And someone else give me that as an improper fraction. Uh, 16 over 5. Cool. Well, we're almost done. Now that we have that converted, which is not such a bad step, we know how to multiply fractions. Do we need a common denominator here? No. No. Extend the line. Put our multiplication. Simplify? Yeah. What? Four and four four 16. 16. I know four goes into both those numbers. Four goes into four one time and into 16 four times. I get 44 over 5. Now, if we do our division, that's going to be 8 and 4 fifths. The last thing I want to talk about, before I give you a couple examples here, is how to divide some fractions. We're going to look at that right now. If we're going to divide fractions that have some mixed numbers in it, we're going to start with something like, let's just do 4 ninths divided by 7. 4 ninths divided by 7. <coughs> Can you do that problem? Yes. What do you have to do first, though? Like you probably have to change this whole number into a fraction at some point, right? That way we can work with this as a fraction. How do you change 7 into a whole, uh, the whole number into a fraction? What do you have to do? 